Now, of course, this is just an oversimplification. As you blend your painting, there will be more shades. But I think for beginners, it is easier to just divide the shadows into three. Keep in mind that angle, light source, and lighting intensity also take role in how the shadow would look. Most important thing in rendering is breakdown. No, not mental breakdown. Or maybe it is. Let's say you're drawing a face. When you break it down, there are eyes, nose, and lips. That's it. Easy, right? <laughs> Wrong. You need to break down the planes of the face. Let's welcome today's reference. This is a picture of Cha Eun Woo. I picked this picture because he's gorgeous. <laughs> <clears throat> but also it has clear shadow, making it easier to see the planes in his face. Compare it with pictures with blurry shadow, like you cannot even see his cheekbones. So picking the right reference is also very important in rendering. If you want to learn about the planes in more details, you can study 3D models. But for today, I'm going to super simplify it with a news picture. Or else this will be a 3 hour long video. Usually in cell shading, there's only base color and hard shadow. But in semi-realism, the shadow is more complicated. I'm breaking down the shadow into 3 levels. Base color, darker shadow, and the shadow in between. The shadow in between, let's just call it medium shadow for short. I'm so bad at naming things. You see the delicate shadow around the nose and cheekbones? That's the medium shadow. It's not very dark, but without it, the face looks really flat. This doesn't apply for just the face. Hair, clothes, accessories, they need medium shadow to create depth. Depth. How do you speak English? To make medium shadow, apply your darkest shadow with low opacity brush. And take the color in between. If it's still too dark, repeat with the color you just made. Now, of course, this is just an oversimplification. As you blend your painting, there will be more shades. But I think for beginners, it is easier to just divide the shadows into three. Keep in mind that angle, light source, and lighting intensity also take role in how the shadow would look. A lot of beginners are usually afraid to apply this medium shadow on the face because it's placed on delicate areas like around the nose and it can look really weird if you're not used to it. Try applying it with low opacity hard brush or even airbrush. But I recommend the hard brush more. Second most important thing in rendering is procrastination is key. Let me explain. But first, let's take a step back and talk about the sketch. Fung, I thought this is a rendering tutorial! Yeah, well, you can't render a painting without a sketch now, can you? Unless you're an art god, like Cox Illust. But sadly, you're not, and neither am I. So, to make our rendering process easier, we need to have a clean sketch, or even a line art. But who are we kidding? We're lazy, so clean sketch is okay. Fung, get to the point already! Okay, when I'm talking about a clean sketch, it also means draw it as less detailed as possible. Focus on the bigger picture. Any details, accessories, ornaments, what have you, draw it later. Hence, procrastinate. If your character only wears like a t-shirt and yoga pants, it's easy. But I'm drawing New Villette today, the new Genshin character from Fontaine. If I draw the details right away, it will be harder during the rendering because there are too many distractions. Like there's the golden lapel, and then the blue thing, another blue thing, the fancy needle. See? Too many distractions. Instead, paint the lapels first and then add the details in another layer. By the way, the procrastination also works on colors. I talk about it in more details in this video, but basically it's a good idea to paint in dull colors first, or even black and white, especially if you're a beginner and just learning how to render, and then add saturated colors later once you already built your painting. So I was reading your comments and most of you have difficulty differentiating the parts in the painting without the sketch. Because when you paint over the sketch, the shapes and details can get lost. Like, the f did I just paint? That's also probably why your sketch tends to look better than your actual painting. So here's my suggestion. First, duplicate your sketch. Place it on top, set it to multiply, then lower the opacity. And then turn it off and paint over your sketch. Now every time you're stuck or get lost, turn on the sketch layer. Second thing to do, apply darker color for areas with darkest shadow. If we are referring to this picture, it would be in these areas. Also, avoid using smudge tool as much as possible. Smudge tool has a tendency to be blurry and it makes the painting look really flat. If you want to blend, use low opacity hard brush, not airbrush. Use a hard brush to keep all the texture. By the way, I'm using this brush in Ibis Paint. I use it for basically everything. I don't like using too many brushes. Also, when rendering hair, sometimes the details can get really lost, and the hair looks flat as a result. Which brings me to the third point. 
add line art. I know, I know, we're painting over the sketch. Why do we have to line art? Line art is the easiest and the quickest way to revive the details and the shape that got lost in rendering. Sometimes our painting look flat not because we suck. It could be that the object is too small or the shape is too complicated, which most of the time happens in hair, clothing folds, and accessories. And rather than stressing about it, just use line art. Use the duplicated sketch as your guide. The third most important thing is move on. Never stay on the same place for too long. That sounds like a bad advice on a self-help book, but no, it's still about rendering art. Like it or not, we get stuck from time to time during rendering. I sometimes got stuck when rendering hair, and I painted over and over and over and still end up with garbage. When this happens, leave it alone. Move on to other parts like clothes or face. Even when you're not stuck, it's better to distribute your energy to the whole painting rather than just focusing on rendering a certain part. Also, it's good to learn how to paint different materials. Like I really want to learn how to paint gold and metal and also different fabrics so that I don't have to draw Genshin Man shirtless all the time. Learning different materials will make it easier for you to render, especially how lighting works on different surfaces. Alright, this painting looks pretty much done, right? <laughs> No, it's not. Before we call it a day, we're going to use blending modes. I talk about it a lot in my previous videos. Basically, if you want to adjust the colors, add makeup, highlights, patterns, ornaments, what have you, you can do that using blending modes. Ibis Paint also has a lot of filters you can experiment with. Some of them are paid features, so if you got cha-ching, you can try them out. But for F2P users like myself, I suggest trying parallel gradation. Duplicate the layer before you apply the filter, then clip it, set the layer to soft light, and lower the opacity as you see fit. Another filter you should try is Unsharp Mask. Now unlike the name, it actually sharpens your painting. I don't like my painting blurry and soft, I want it to be sharp and crisp. Like Nuvillet's eyeliner game. Sometimes just adding a simple filter makes your painting a lot more interesting. So key takeaways for rendering. Breakdown, procrastinate, move on. Now I'm gonna go with my new Fontaine Dragon Daddy. 